Welcome to Unit 2. In Unit 2, we shall be discussing verbs. In the outline of this lesson, we'll be talking about transitive and intransitive verbs. We'll be talking In Unit 1, we spoke about the fact that every sentence can be broken down into key parts. We can have an adjective, a noun, and a verb. Of course, we can have more parts than this, but this all depends on what um, the function of that particular word is. Today, we will be focusing on verbs. Verbs are very important um, parts of speech because they actually are the glue of the sentence and hold the central idea. Generally, they indicate action. They are doing, being, and having words. But some words can behave in very interesting ways. If we look at this um, paragraph over here, do you think you can identify some of the verbs? Okay, well, let's look at them together. Jones seized the ball and ran. He must have run 50 meters when he was tackled. The crowd went wild. They shouted and cheered. Another player, Ralph Smith, tried to take the ball from Jones. Both players were struggling for the possession of the ball when the referee blew his whistle and waved them apart. Okay, so you might see that some words are a little bit of a weird one, such as this one over here. Also this over here, which is the verb. Are they both a verb? Are they verbs, one verb together? These are some of the questions we'll answer as we go through this um, video. Firstly, we talk about a transitive and an intransitive verb. A transitive verb is followed by an object. If we want a way to remember this, you can just think that trans sounds like transport. So it's almost as if the verb is transporting or doing something to the object. We then have an intransitive verb, which does not have an object. You can see we have two different sentences here. For the transitive verb, we have the pirate drank the rum. For the intransitive verb, we have the pirate drank. We don't know what it drank, what he drank or she drank. We just know he drank, he or she drank. The next thing we want to talk about is the difference between a finite and a non-finite verb. The word finite sounds like finished, so this means it's a verb that actually seems to be complete. How do we know a verb is complete? Well, it has to have a subject, a number, and a tense. By subject, we mean we understand who or what is performing the action. By a number, we mean it's either singular or plural. Is, one, is it only one person performing the action, or are they two? By tense, we mean are we talking about a present tense, past tense, or future tense? So is it happening now, has it happened already, or will it be happening? Non-finite verbs are verbs that don't have a subject. They don't have a number, and they don't have a tense. So for example, if you see the word here, waiting for the bus, we want to ask the question, who was waiting for the bus? We don't actually know. So this is definitely a non-finite. The, the word waiting is a non-finite verb. We have a word there called the error of concord. That just means that your the number of your verb needs to match its tense. When we talk about non-finite parts of verbs, we are talking about things such as infinitives and participles. Infinitives are any word that sounds like a verb but has a to in front. So to eat, to drink, to sleep. These are called the root verb and the verb will stem from that. So we could say I am eating, I will be eating, I ate. Participles instead um, can also indicate completeness of action and can also show the tense of a word. Participles can either end in a past, a past tense, so an ed, or a present um, ending, such as an ing. This does not mean, however, that the tense of those words will necessarily be past or present tense. It all depends on what verb comes in front of it. Also remember that some past participles don't always end in ed. So, for example, I had eaten, the word eaten does not end in ed. So just remember that some verbs might have irregular endings. Sometimes participles can behave a little bit differently than what we anticipated. These might come across as a bit confusing, but we need to ask ourselves, what is the function of the verb, or of that particular word in that sentence? For example, if we say a talking canary, the word talking 
is not actually being performed. It would be an, a verb if it was the canary is talking. However, in this case, it's actually describing what kind of canary it is. So this is acting as an adjective. We have a very special name for this, and this is called a gerundive. We can also talk about activities that end in an ing, which these are all present participles. Swimming is a good exercise. In this case, are we actually swimming? Is someone actually swimming? No, they're not. We're talking about the activity of swimming, and therefore this is a noun. We call this a gerundive. So if you just learn the word gerundive, a gerund, sorry, if you learn the word gerund, you will therefore remember gerundive, because gerundive sounds like adjective on the end. Another type of verb we want to speak about is something called an auxiliary verb. This is a verb that helps to complete a, or indicate a tense of a word. So for example, the man had walked. The word had indicates that it might have happened, the, the completeness of the action, um, and also can in, in, indicate the tense. We're now quickly going to do a verb summary of everything that we learnt. We learnt about transitive and intransitive verbs. A transitive verb has a, um, an object that follows it, an intransitive one doesn't. We then learnt about non-finite and finite verbs. Non-finite verbs are infinitives. They are the root verb and they start with a to in front, so to eat, to sleep. We also learnt about participles. These can end in an ed or an ing. Sometimes past participles may be exceptions, but that doesn't matter for now. So, for example, we can have the word waited is a past participle, waiting is a present participle. If we look at this, participles are non-finite because we do not know if this verb is even finished. Who did the verb? Um, when did they do it? Any of those things, we can't answer it. So, therefore, we use an auxiliary verb sometimes. These are called helping verbs. So, for example, we can say had and we can say are, are both auxiliary verbs. She had waited, we are waiting. Now we have everything we need to have a finite verb. Is there a subject? Is there a number? Is there a tense? And yes, there is. The subject in the first sentence is she. The number is singular and the tense is past tense. If we're talking about the second sentence, we are waiting, the subject is we, the number is plural, and the tense is present tense. Sometimes we also don't always need an auxiliary verb. We just know that the, the verb in itself is completed. So she waited or we wait. Um, but you can sense when these are absolutely complete.